Hi, I'm George Pearson. In this Adobe Photoshop video, we'll be changing the background from this table background over to this white background. And we'll be doing that with a vector mask. And if you like this video, make sure you click that like button and also share with your friends. If you want to always be notified of new videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel. And if you really want to learn how to use Photoshop, take a look at my complete training and you'll find links for that in the description. Okay, let's get to it. There are several different techniques you can use to change a background or remove a background, things like that. It really depends upon your picture, depends upon your subject matter, which one is the best way to go. Now something like this with a nice hard edge geometric shapes, this is an easy one for a vector mask. Also a nice thing about vector masks is you can go back and you can adjust or change them very easily by going to the path. You see there's the vector mask right there, still included as a path. Okay, let's see how this is done. First off, let me just get rid of that sample layer up here. So here is the original. If I hide that, there's the original picture. We'll be just doing a little bit of value adjustment first. We'll then come in and add in a layer mask. Let me disable the layer mask. So we'll lighten the picture up so that the, the cup is good and the saucer is nice. We'll then add in this vector mask and that will then give us this nice image and simply bring in a different background and there we go. There is our image on a clean background. I've also tossed in a little drop shadow in there. A little faint line in there. That's just because we are seeing one of our paths. Let me just click outside to hide that. There we go. Okay, let's go ahead and see how this whole project is done. I'll start off by just closing this down and then I'll reopen my original picture right here. Now I have this, a link for this on my video support page. You'll find a link for that, of course, in the description so you can download the same image if you want to. All right, let's go ahead now and make a vector mask for this. Now we'll be using the pen tool right there. And when you're looking at these kind of elliptical shapes, all you need here is basically four points, a point here and a point here and a point down here and the one up there, but that's hidden. So what I'll be doing is a point at this intersection right here, then this point, that point, point at this right here, point at the intersection, and again we have a curve here, so I can do a point right there, and then a point here, point here, 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 and so forth. And just again, same thing here, we have an ellipse up here, so I like having points at the wide parts of my ellipse. So right here and then right there that we need. So we'll start off right down in that position. I'll zoom in, so we can do a nice clean one here. There we go. Grab the pen tool, and right in the corner, I'll just click on that one. Now it's basically straight up here, so I'll take it up towards straight, and you can see right about here. I'll then click and pull, and that gives me a curve line segment. Now let's just roll down and move this image over a bit to get to the top right here and again I'll just click and pull on that don't worry about this we'll come back and we'll fix that in just a bit let's get the one on the right hand side now it'll be right here click and pull so it gives you curves you kind of curve right down over to here so I'll click and pull there and then just click at that point down there that's basically straight. It actually is a curve, but it's basically straight in our view here. So let's leave it as straight. Click there. That's a curve. We'll fix that in just a second. This is a straight. So I'll click here and click and drag there. Click and drag over here. And then just a click right there. Again, don't worry about those yet. We'll fix everything after we have our points in. So I have a point here. I can do a point right down here. Now because I'm going to you know, a different kind of a curve here. I'm going to put one more in the middle, just make it easier. Click and drag, and then I'll click down there. We can convert the points to curves and curves to points. Now here's the bottom plate curve. There's the furthest out on the right-hand side, so right here I want one. Click and pull right there. Let's find the bottom of the plate. Just kind of move things around. Okay, there's the bottom, so a click and pull 
Notice how it kind of came in spun there. I'll just spin that around so it's the right direction. Let's find the left-hand side now. That's over here somewhere. Right about there. Click and drag on that one. And then come back up to our starting point and just click on the starting point. And that closes that out. Okay, we can now back out just a little bit. Hold the Alt key there and just back out just a touch. So here's our two control handles. I'll now switch over here to the direct selection tool right there. I can then click on these control handles here and see these little handles here kind of pop out. So I have my points, my vector points, and then my control handles. And I can use this to adjust the curve. So you can go in or out like that. And I can pull this in until the curve just touches that edge of that plate. I won't spend a lot of time on this one part because I want to go relatively fast through this video, but this gives you the basic idea. I'd probably come in, you know, spend more time getting these things exactly right. Yeah, let's pull this one out. But it's pretty easy, as you can see, to come in and then get a real nice clean curve on this. It is a real close match. Just a matter of moving these control handles around until you get what you want. Now, if you move one, you may need to come back and readjust the other one, kind of work them back and forth a little bit and edge your way in to a perfect shape. But that looks good. Let's come down here. This one's way off, as you can see. So I'll just grab this one, pull this one straight out. And that pulls my curve out. And just come right against that edge. Now up here our control handles are in pretty tight. I'll just grab that one and pull that out until it matches. So I'm pulling this out here so it's out far enough. I'll have to come back now and pull this one in a little bit. So it's a, a bit of a seesaw approach, you know, working one out and one in until you get just the right amount. They'll be about the same size if everything is perfect. You know, if the perspective is perfect on your photograph, if the plate is perfectly round, some of those things, but things are never actually perfect, so they won't be exactly the same length. You can't judge by that. You'll have to kind of eyeball it a little bit and get them exactly where you want them. Okay, that's pretty good. So then move up here. Now in this one, we come into a straight right there. I'm gonna pull this out a little bit and that will give me that bit of a curve. And then right here, we have our two handles. I can pull these out to get the curve for that handle of the cup. This one's kind of funky looking. And that's because of this. Now notice if I move one in, the other one spins up there. I can fix that by holding the Alt key down and then grab that one with the Alt key held. I can then move that separately. So let's pull that down here so that one's kind of a straight and then I can adjust the top separately from that. Same thing over here. I'll hold the Alt key down and pull that one in so that line is straight. And then I can work this one separately. And that's pretty good. Now down here I need to have a little bit of a curve in here. I'm not seeing it. So you need to put one in. I'm going to go over here to the Pen tool. Come here. Now don't click with the Pen tool yet. Hold the Alt key down and notice I get this, this change on that cursor in there. A little kind of a little pointy thing. That's with the Alt key held down. I can now click and drag and that pulls out control handles. Do the same thing over here. Click and drag on that. It pulls out control handles. Okay, back to the direct select tool and let's now work these control handles. I'm going to pull this one in so it's straight right there. Down here, hold the Alt key down and grab that one so I can move that one separately. Same thing over here, hold the Alt key down, move that one separately. And I can now use those handles in here to give me that nice little small curve and a little adjustment right there. That's good. Let's now move around. That looks pretty good there. That's not too bad. Just needs just a little bit of a tweak. Now this is in quite a bit as you can see, so it's Guess we can see both of our handles, they're right there. I'll pull this one up. 
and let's pull this one out and go back and forth just a little bit until I get the curve where I want it. Looks like right about there. Most of the time is actually spent doing this, coming in and adjusting your curves. Getting your curves exactly the way you want them. The nice thing is though, it's real easy as you can see to come in and actually make these kind of adjustments. And again, this is why I like using these path tools to create this kind of a mass, this vector mass, because it's real easy to get a very nice clean selection matching one of these more regular shapes. Okay, that's good enough. I think I probably spent a little more time on this if I was doing this one for a finish. This is real close, so it's good enough for this video. Let's now just back out. I'll just fit on screen. So there's the basic path, as you can see, in our control handles. If you go up here to the paths, you'll see there it is as a work path right there. Okay, now all we have to do, I'm going to first make a copy of this layer and I'll hide that. That's just a habit I get into. I always work on copies and not the original. Now I'm on the direct select tool here. Either this or the pen tool, either one is fine. Right click inside of the path and the very top, create vector mask. Now the other kind of mask you do down here is make a selection and then use that selection to make a layer mask down there. But we'll just skip all of that and go right to create vector mask and choose OK. There's the vector mask. There it is clean with a nice clean background. Now another nice point about this is I can go back to the paths up here and notice I now have a new path. Background copy, vector mask. This is the vector mask for this layer which is the background copy. That means that I can go up here to my paths, I can select this and then actually change or adjust the layer mask by adjusting the path in this path. Here's our path for the layer mask or the vector mask. So I have a lot of control on this for adjusting and fine-tuning further on down. Okay, but there it is. There we have now just removed that background by using a vector mask. Now if you're still seeing the path like this, just go up to paths, click outside someplace, and that then hides the path. Okay, back to our layers again. Let's now adjust our values. I'm going to show the background again. Here's our background, original background. I want to adjust the values of the cup, it's just a little bit too dark. Go back here to the Move tool, just a habit of mine. Let's put an adjustment layer in here. So Layer, New Adjustment Layer, Levels, my personal favorite. Use Previous Layer to Create Clipping Mask. Check that. She's OK. We now can adjust this and brighten this up a little bit. Right here with this little slider control. To the right darkens, to the left lightens. I want just a little bit lighter. Now notice as I go lighter I also lose some contrast in the darks. So I'll pull the contrast back by pulling the dark side in a little bit. Just just a touch. Doesn't need much. Maybe five or six. Just a little bit. So I've lightened up the mid-tones which also lightens up the lights. There we go. Just a little bit brighter looking. And we've kept our darks looking good by bringing the darks in just a little bit here, just a touch. This is really you know, eyeballing this to get just the right settings. It's a personal preference. We've added in a little bit more contrast by bringing the darks up. We can also bring the lights up a little bit here. Adds a little more contrast on the light end. Just giving the picture a little bit more of a punchy look to it. All right, let's close that down. Can now check that. There it is before, after. I think that looks much better. Now for our white background, all I need to do is put a new background here on top of this background. So new layer, there it is. Here's white in the foreground. Go to the paint bucket and paint. Fills it in. There's your white background. Of course, you also could do if you wanted to layer, new fill layer, solid color, and do white that way. Another way of doing it. Several ways of making a white layer. One last thing I want to do here is I want to have a little bit of a shadow on this. And I'll do that with a layer style. So layer, layer style, come down to drop shadow. It's kind of off to the left hand side. I'm going to move this here to the middle, which will be 90 degrees, straight up and down. And it looks pretty good. 
The distance is set right here. That's how far out it comes. I want just a little bit. The size is how soft that edge is. So I want just a little bit of softness right about in there. Me 27, there, distance 27. Now there's coincidentally matching. That isn't necessarily the case all the time. So it's a little drop shadow. Choose OK. And there it goes. There it is without and with the drop shadow. There's with and without the white background. And here's with the original background, but the cup is lightened up. And there it is with the cup dark and the cup lightened. So a lot of things that you can do on this to clean your picture up. But the main one is using that vector mask, which is made with the pen tool, to allow you to hide the background on that layer and then put in any background that you want, in this case, changing it to a nice white background. Okay, so there you go. That is how to change the background by using the pen tool and making a vector mask. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.